Welcome back to Key to the Game Podcast, Episode 8. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, man. Um, today, we got a special guest, Malcolm Snoop Pope. Just introduce yourself, man. Let the people know who you are, where you're from, and everything. Malcolm Pope, everybody know me as Snoop. <laughs> you know, man, I'm from Harlem. I like to believe I am Harlem. You know? at, tell them where I'm at in Harlem. I'm 43rd between Amsterdam and Broadway, Sugar Hill District. You know, man. But I'm really everywhere around Harlem, just to be honest with you. you know, man? Started off playing ball in all the parks, the local joints, even the ones that dudes probably don't know nothing about. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. Man. Um, just let the people know what you got going on right now, because as you know, as everybody know you into the coaching thing now, just let the people know. Right now, I spent the last three years, always sell, I saved the Lutheran in the Bronx. Super dope experience. Um, I'm the head coach at Pioneer Academy in Jersey, same um, public beat, just like Roselle Catholic. Uh, head coach of the 17 U New York Lightning team. And, you know, it's going to be a big winter. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, um, how did you get on the coaching scene? I know you played a lot of basketball, but a lot of people who play basketball, they don't feel like they want to do the coaching thing. What made you feel like you wanted to do the coaching thing? Honestly speaking, I didn't want to do the coaching <laughs> thing, you know, man. I just want. I knew I wanted to continue to be around the game, and you know everybody that I talked to told me don't do it. That's already involved in the game. It was like yo, it's mad time consuming and things like that. But you know, I know I want to still be around the game. And I was confused about what my next step, life wise, would be. You know, I mean, I knew obviously I wanted to put myself in a situation to make a good living for myself financially, for my kids, and things like that. But I also wanted to make sure I still was around the game, something that I enjoy being. around. Um, so we just going to rewind back because there was a point in time, your eighth grade year, you was the number one dude in the nation. Not the, not the city, the nation. <laughs> what was that like? Uh, coming from the environment that we come from, like, dudes don't know, you know, you take New York City, right? You think of New York City, you're like, oh, they got all these basketball. But Harlem, we literally didn't have no dudes in the league. Yeah. So for me, it's almost like I was walking around as if I was a dude that was in the league around that time, between the one to sign autographs and taking pictures and things like that. We wasn't even heavy on the pictures and stuff like that back in the day. It'd be real, we still had the, the flip phones and sidekicks and all of that <laughs> stuff, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, it was a dope experience. I, for me, I like to tell people it was an out-of-body experience because I never expected nothing like that to be transpiring. That wasn't my goal. Like I said, I tell people all day long, I never loved basketball. I just love competing. You know, we come from home, yo, I got better sneakers than you. I got a better chip than you. I made my outfit better than you. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the competitiveness. Mm -hmm. So dudes would be like, yo, that's such and such. Oh, y'all think he nice? Don't worry about it. I'm gonna go over there and show you that he's not like that. And that was like, you feel like that's what Help you cement yourself as the one number one eight, uh, number one eighth grader because you just yeah. felt like anybody in front of you just had to kill. Him. Yeah, because first of all, anybody that know me growing up, my pops is at every game. That's no way. He coaching a lot of yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the car ride back would not be pleasant. No mm -hmm. way. If somebody did me dirty, like he was like a ball ball before. LeVar boy, he yelling out the crowd, you bust that nigga ass, da 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 I ain't got no choice because I know it's either I get at son or he gonna get at me. Mm -hmm. And I was more comfortable with somebody else being on the receiving end than me being on the receiving end of what he was gonna do. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, it, it was fun. You understand know what I'm saying? Like, I never looked at it like, oh, such and such is ranked this, that, and third. I should be scared like some of the other dudes was. Like, none of my friends played basketball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the lives that they were living was something to be scared of. Mm -hmm. So when I'm seeing dudes that's on the court, like that's fun to me. Like I'm yeah. not, all right, let me get that dude just to show y'all I'm better than him. And then I'm going to go about my day. You know what I mean? So and then it all just came out of nowhere. You know, it's crazy. Coach Weed actually was like, yo, he's sitting on a stool because he's from my hood. He was like, yo, yo son, you know you're about to blow up, right? <laughs> What was this after? It was after a particular game? Yeah, we was um so we was playing in four fifth rocker. I was like I was twelve playing fourteen U midgets. 
whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's like me, Terrell McKenzie. Shout out to T Mac, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of them ones. Yeah, um, he definitely was. Yeah, my son Tyreek Wilson, or Coleman, excuse me. Yeah, the name changed. Jiggy and all of us, we all, we playing Caffelli and we playing Riverside and Championship. Shout out to all of them. Shout yeah. out to all those dudes in there. Yeah, those are the guys, but we playing Riverside and Championship. I think I was there. That was at uh, Milbank. Milbank. Yeah. I played 12 and under. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And what you call it, I just caught fire out of nowhere. I hit like six threes. This actually was on my pop's wedding day. Mm. So we was rushing from the game. Like all of us went to the wedding and all that right after. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, I caught fire, caught MVP. Obviously, I'm playing up, and we is like, yo, you're about to blow up. I'm like, okay, word. Like, that's not realistic for yeah. us. You understand know what I'm saying? But then out of nowhere, Tom Pachowski, you know what I mean? Rest in peace, Tom Pachowski, he, he walked up to me. We did that handshake? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was one of them <laughs> handshakes. So. They said if Tom Pachowski never shook your hand, you ain't nothing. Right. And he thought it's crazy because at the time, he. You know, Tom know everything. Yeah. So I'm just coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So he thought I was like, it was ISA. Well, it's 17, it's ISA high school division. And he's like, so who's looking at you at this time? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm trying to figure out what high school I'm going to still. You understand what I'm saying? Like, he's like, high school, yeah. So then, you know, his word is everything. So then that's how it blew up out of proportion. That's how he became number one. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I, mean, I would like to think he played a major, <laughs> a major role in that. I remember, like, um, I was just telling uh, fucking Greg, PlayStation, I was telling him, like, besides Sebastian, PlayStation was, like, the name that I used to hear. Not mm -hmm. even as far as, like, being the best basketball player, just the popularity. Mm -hmm. Me coming up, I was about three years younger than you, two years younger than you, I believe. Mm -hmm. Your name was the name that I was hearing, like, as far as popularity. The, the Snoop. Mm -hmm. I just wonder where you got that name from. Yo, it's crazy. So, you know, they used to have Iceberg. Mm -hmm. So, they had all the cartoon yep. characters and Snoopy all that. Was on it. So, they had Snoopy on it. So, when I was in the hospital, one of my pops' mans, he had the Iceberg joint on. Mm -hmm. so I was pale with the big ears. I was just got <laughs> the big ears. So, a dude from my hood, like super gangster dude. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you like the nigga on the shirt, bitch. So, then they just started to call me Snoop from there. But yeah, fucking um, being a number one high school player in the nation with uh, your class, your class included like guys like Jiggy Josh, Corey Fisher, Darius Gabriel, who, who other, um, who are some other big names? Uh, OJ Mayo. OJ oh yeah, that's that's in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was he was the big dog. You know what I mean? Like OJ Mayo, Derrick Rose, uh, Nolan Smith, Eric Gordon. Uh, Nick K Love from Florida, K Love. It was, it was, yeah, and they was on the scene Mike back then Beasley. too. Yeah, they yeah. was on the scene back then too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I started playing with the Lightning, now I didn't know nothing about leaving New York. You know, mm -hmm. we four fifth Rutgers citywide, Save the Children, UDC, <laughs> the Raw Strickland. We mm -hmm. we on that type yeah. of time. You get what I'm saying? So the Lightning gave me the opportunity to start traveling and stuff. You like, oh, it's dudes that play ball in Florida and Ohio and. And they nice too, though. Big country you know, so, Yeah, <laughs> dunking and we six and seven great. We like, God, I can't touch the backboard, son. <laughs> That's a, our goal was just to slap. Yeah, the backboard. slap backboard. You know I mean, double tap all that pause, mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah, like, so you seeing those type of dudes and you like, yo, they think I'm better than Sut over there. I gotta really step my shit in mm -hmm. before Sut catch me in traffic yeah. and this shit go left. You get what I'm saying? Because there was already like I didn't know what reclassing was yeah. until I got to high school further into high school, but them dudes was already, like, OJ was already, like, 14 years old. We was just, <laughs> not serious. We in, we in seventh grade. Like I said, I'm 12 years old. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? So it's the equivalence of me playing against a high school dude. And that's not taking nothing away, because I seen him that same year play 17s and still violating dudes. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, this the, that experience of knowing that it's other life outside of New York, because, you know, we... You like to run with the fact that we the method in basketball. You see all those other dudes and you like, yo, all right, I got to step it up. Because mm -hmm. you know y'all might look at me this way, but I'm looking at them dudes and I know, you know I mean, this could go left yeah, yeah. real quick. You know what I'm saying? But I survived it, so that's all that matters. And um, going into high school, I remember reading an article 
when you was in eighth grade and they, and, uh, they were saying all the schools was reaching out to you. What, like, what, what, what schools you had in mind going into high school? What, what schools you was thinking about going to? Obviously, you know, that you all mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Rice. Rice is, <laughs> Rice is always the number one choice. My pops went to Rice, both my uncles went to Rice. Every overhead in my hood went to Rice, Kiki. Yeah, mm -hmm. from the same. Oh, I, I didn't even know Kiki. Yeah, Kiki and Clark. Shout out to Kiki. Yeah, we from the same hood. He went to Rice, so I used to actually go with weed to mm -hmm. Kiki games. And we used to have these t-shirts that said number three for three. Yeah, he used to always yeah, three. He wore number three. They, call, they used to call that motherfucker wet those. Wet those. Uh, yeah, yeah, young world. <laughs> That's a jump shot I seen in my yeah, life to this cash. day. To this day. You know what I mean? So, obviously in my head I thought I was going to Rice. Mo was heavy on recruiting me and things like that. It was To me it was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Halfway into my eighth grade year, Coach Joe Man taking that Blair, you know, him and Nate Blue coordinated for me to come up to see um, Blair Academy in New Jersey. I still wasn't sold, just to yeah. be honest with you. Like, I'm with Charlie Ville and the Wave and Lou Aldane on my visit. They my tour guys showing me around. I'm like, oh, this is like, I can't, like, some shit like this right outside actually, of New York. Actually, I thought you played with them. That'd have been mm, crazy. But nah. you said you played with them like on my visit, gym, yeah, on my visit. I played with them at Open Gym and it was dope because it was college coaches. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I'm saying? They got every school in the What they, they was both two top and five. three. Two and three, and yeah, Braun was so one. Braun was <laughs> one. The wall was two, Charlie was three. You know what I mean? So you got two and three on the same team. So, you know, in a situation where it's like, all right, this is dope, but they're not going to be here next yeah. year. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, what makes me want to come all the way out here? It's like 485 students in the school, and maybe 15 is black. Super culture change. So I'm doing my visit, whatever. I come back, and my moms, my grandmoms, they laughing and joking, shaking the coach's hand. What's going on? Yeah. Oh no, you coming here. <laughs> so they don't give a fuck about the basketball. Yeah, because my moms never thought I really deserved all the attention I was getting. Yeah. Because she like, yo, you wake up every day, and you just go play basketball. Other people's working hard, they're doing this, that, third day in the gym, this, that. You just going out, you got a God given talent, and you're not appreciating it the way that you're supposed to. You just get lucky by making it by all these dudes, right? So even then, me and my pops, we like, yo, he's wild, son. <laughs> no, we're not going out here. Like, they did the paperwork and all of that. Yeah. We're not going out here. So St. Pat's reaches out. Mm -hmm. You know, man? Kevin Boyle. So, I think Kevin Boyle, he got yeah. uh, Mount Verde right now. Yeah, so I go to one of the practices. I'm thinking it's a visit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we practice. So I'm like, I ain't no problem. Yo, we had to do defense for like 45 minutes. He jumping out there, doing the examples, up the line, up the line. Up. I'm like, oh, nah, this is where I need to be at. So, like, That's, he, he gonna get you ready. Yeah, but at the time, he... He yeah. wasn't what he was right now. Yeah, like right now, he's iconic on yeah, the high school level. Yeah. He still this was legendary. And he that. still was legendary in Jersey because, you know, he had the Al Harringtons and Shaheen mm -hmm. Holloway, stuff like that. I believe Shaheen played yeah, for yeah. Don't quote me on, but I believe so, too. Yeah, but... I'm like, yo, this is where I need to be. And my pops dumb hype. My pops like, yo, I know something's gonna get in your ass. Pause. Like, everybody else, I wanted to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this is where you need to be going. So I played summer tournaments with them, like at Rutgers. And I think we played in a hoop group event. And he was starting me as a freshman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and then I remember seeing an article, NJ Hoops, New York's number one eighth grader comes to Jersey to be New Jersey's number one freshman, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh shit, like they feeling me in Jersey too. I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I gotta play. And then, out of nowhere, I don't know what conversation took place with my moms and my pops, but they was kind of like on the fence about where I'm gonna go. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to St. Pat's, baby. Cause my pops, he, he, he is strong on me. Like, yo, listen, you a grown ass man. So what, what you want you to do? Yeah. I'm going to St. Pat's. And then I, they ain't got no dorms. Blair got dorms. See, I want me to stay yeah. with one of the coaches. I'm going to travel there near two hours because St. Pat's used to be in Elizabeth. Yeah. It ain't in Hillsdale or whatever that shit is at right now. So I'm like, two hours to stay with the coach. There's like four other dudes. <laughs> nah, because something ain't sit right with me. First of all, you're a grown man. Yeah. I know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, we ain't doing that. So then that's how the Blair shit happened. And um, what you felt about that decision? Like, you think that was a good decision? I know your, your, your high school career was like, it was like a journey. Super. With, 
with like a lot of schools. Like, just take us through that. Honestly, Blair was the right decision. It was just at the wrong time in my life. Like, if I'd have known what I knew now, then shit would have been different. I wasn't no dude that was in the networking and understanding how good of an education that it is over there and things like that. You're sitting there now in retrospect, you look back and you're like, that would have been the best situation for me because a lot of dudes is still either playing or they like accounting, so in the coaching field, things that could have helped me out. And I just never built that type of relationship with none of those dudes like that. I was always super to myself because I was arrogant. Just to be real, I come to games, I go sit by myself in the corner while the rest of the team laughing and joking or locked in. Yeah, you got that cockiness with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's still there. I got an issue with two. No, yeah, now, now it's confidence. Yeah, but it was like I should have definitely embraced that situation more. And that's probably the one high school or school period I said I should have did my whole career there because it would have helped me out significantly. But like I said, you a kid, I was 13 going, 14 going. You got that mom like. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, big dog. You want me to sit there and, 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 and learn. Like, no, I didn't want to learn. I wanted to play. I'm a kid still. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to wait my turn. But like I said, it was a super dope experience. Like, but, you know, obviously I wanted to go to rights. You know what I mean? Like, to this day, that still was my number one option. But, like I said, the Blair situation, I transferred twice from there. You know what I mean? Like, nobody know I transferred twice from there. He so I happened to let me back. And he was like, yo, you can't come right back on the varsity team. You got to play freshman. Like, all right. I feel you. Because I didn't understand what I was getting into. Like I said, my first game at Blair was, you know, my second game, excuse me, was in a tournament in Delaware. Second game was against Darrell, Darrell Wright. Oh, uh, all right, that Miami. Yeah, it went straight to the league that year. <laughs> that year. I mean, my pops and the crowd sitting next to Danny Ainge, because Danny Ainge is there watching Darrell Wright. Danny Ainge was with Boston at the time, or where he was at? Don't quote me. I, I, I want to say he was with Boston at the time. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't into none of that stuff. Yeah, I'm still an actor, kid. Yeah, I'm a kid. I mean, like, but um, yeah. So I transferred after that because I got like six minutes that game, and I know for a freshman, looking back in retrospect, right? Playing at Blair, that's pretty decent. Yeah, because <laughs> most of my friends is in the city playing, playing freshman. freshman. You get what I'm saying? But still, because my level is a powerhouse at the time, and my arrogance didn't allow yeah. the dude I was backing up was the number one point guard in the country in 05. <laughs> But in my head, I don't care that about that. Yeah, man. you think I'm the dude too. Yeah, we in practice. I don't see no large separation mm -hmm. for him to play the majority of the minutes the way he's playing. Now, he was super nice. Shout out to my son, Eric Price, and I'm here from DC, DC Blue Devils. But I never, I didn't see the separation like the coach did. Give yeah. or take, now that I'm a coach, I see things differently mm -hmm. and I understand the business differently. But I was like, my nah, son is wild, you know what I mean? So, Long story short, I played that one freshman game my first day back. I was trying to get a hundred. <laughs> tell you no lie, I was you trying to get like 26, but I, the first quarter wasn't over. The, the 26 in the first quarter? Yeah, the first quarter wasn't over. They had to sit me the rest of the game because the other coach was like, yo, listen, 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 listen. I understand. It's crazy because I went back to Blair not too long ago. My coach, he had got the court named after him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just sitting there vibing and one of the kids that was there, at the school, he he was younger. His pops was like the assistant coach, Coach Pete. His pops was assistant coach. He actually in the NBA right now, okay. doing management and stuff like that. But he was like, "Yo, I remember you had to come and play freshman to get back on the team." <laughs> and it was like, "Ah, it's getting out of control right now." In the first quarter, I was like, "Yeah, I'm trying to get a hundred. Maybe play JV for a game that lasted three quarters. Mm -hmm. No man, it lasted three quarters, and then before you know, I had nothing left, Coach. I'm back on the team." So, like I said, it was a learning experience. I don't think just for me, but for him also moving forward with the type of kids like me that started to come into Blair, it was easier for him to deal with them, especially at a young age. You got younger guys that came in like Jalen Blakes. Mm -hmm. That's like Duke that right Duke. now. Mm -hmm. uh, he came in as a freshman. Well, got Sharif, Sharif um, Abdul Rahim sons did too. Yeah, but he, I think he came like junior year like, or right, something like that. Okay. Yeah, but freshman, you got the kid Ron Ron now, Ron Ruby. I made mean, one of the top freshmen in the country, I think top 25. So he came in in a similar, you know what I mean? Similar fashion. 
Yeah, so it made it easier for him to be able to deal with those dudes. Like even recently, I was there watching him coach, and I'm like, yo, hey, the kids is just shooting the guns. And I used to get taken out the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Taking out the new game. Era, yeah, but I used to get taken out the game for clapping in the dude's face, or, you know what I'm saying? And shit like that. I'm like, that shit loud all this night. But I understand it's a learning it's process. A, it's a, it's a, I feel like it's an adjustment for, just as much as it is an adjustment for the kids, I feel like it's an adjustment for the coaches. Because, like, me, I grew up a Duke fan. Me too. Me I too. remember Duke kids wasn't having braids or none of that. Now they got tattoos, like, tattoos yeah. braids, crazy hair. They recruited a certain type of kid. Yeah, they recruited a certain and type of kid. Even Blair was like that because Blair even played a certain style of play. Like now, obviously, if you ain't getting better, you ain't doing nothing at all, right? Mm -hmm. So the coach of Blair, he adjusted to today's time. They play fast and pace. When I was there, I almost felt like we was playing Princeton off. I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah and I, I'm like, like, the like pull not in your hand yeah, as much like as you, you want Yeah, like you wildest. And I just came from touching the pill every position. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Now you want me to pass, cut, screen away. I can't do none of that. But if I would spent more time learning that, it probably would have made my career down the line a lot easier and more of a smoother transition. But like I said, you live and you learn. Yeah, definitely, man. Life is about lessons. And um, so you leave Blair at a point for good. Mm -hmm. Where do you go? First, I go to my father's couch. That was the first thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was on the futon in the Bronx, man. You know what I mean? But I left, you know, the New York Post called me at like 7 o'clock in the morning. Hey, you just got a quote from your coach at Blair. Where is it that you're going to school at? So I'm 7 o'clock in the morning, you calling me like, son, I wasn't one of those dudes that was early birds. they getting up to work out and none of that stuff. So I'm in a bed sleep. So I just told him, hey, they get off the phone. I'm like, yo, listen. I'm looking at, uh, I want to tell you, I, I said Bishop Lachlan and Rice. You get what I'm saying? And he quote that, so you know, my man Darvell and all of them started hitting. Shout out to Darvell, man. Yeah. That's family right there. They're like, yo, so you about to pull up? You think about to be more calm out there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, I'm not going to Bishop Lachlan. Nobody's traveling all the way to Brooklyn, you know what I mean? Even though Marquise Noel did it, but he's closer to Brooklyn mm -hmm. because he's on the east side. You get what I'm saying? I'm uptown, so I'm not traveling to Brooklyn every day. That's not happening. And then, um, and my son Ebanks, you know what I mean? Hey, did, they, did they have the goings at the time? I don't even know. I didn't even get him an opportunity oh. to tell me. You get what I'm saying? It's in Brooklyn. I'm not going all the way to Brooklyn. <laughs> like, it's not happening. So Ebanks was like, yeah, you might as well pull up here because I was about to play Metro Hall. So Rice is right there. And that's where I wanted to go initially. So I got the opportunity. Now, man, my pops and Mo actually went to Rice together. So, yeah, I'm going to Rice. You know what I mean? So I get there. We just gonna say it wasn't a warm welcome. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, some dudes, everybody wasn't on the same page without throwing dudes, you know what I mean? Under the bus when it was told to them that I would be coming to play at Rice. You know what I mean? Dudes. Certain dudes wasn't feeling it like that, man. And I'm in a good space with everybody in life, so I don't want to know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? start no trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, the only trouble I start on here is yeah. when I talk about motherfuckers getting their ass cut. We're going to yeah. get into that after everybody about <laughs> yeah. like that. Right, right. But um, I got a good one with that, too. Me to the max. <laughs> I got a game. I'm going to ask you about a game, yeah. too, that I heard a lot about. Yeah. But um, so, like I said, it wasn't a warm welcome. Obviously, the dudes there I knew since I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally everybody on the team, almost maybe one or two dudes that I didn't know until I got there and we still built a good rapport. But, you know, Mo let dudes know that I'd be coming into the school and dudes really wasn't feeling it like that, you know what I mean? And Caffelli, you know, my pops was there to take care of something for Caffelli and Caffelli was like, yo, I'll let him go here, son. So I'm like, well, I'm happy. He's like, such and such, such ain't jacking him being on the team, <laughs> son. You know what I mean? Like, it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the defense now. So I didn't even get eligible. And that's how I knew it was some bullshit, right? Look at Kurt Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I, that's how I knew it was some <laughs> bullshit. So I transferred the rights. I'm coming from out of state. Mm -hmm. Remember, Jersey and New York is two different states. I don't care how people try to say how much yeah, they similar. Right? You're supposed to be eligible over it. Well, because even if you, you look now. You got transferred from Catholic to Catholic in the city. Because even if you look now, you got to do like 
Adam Inja or Steven Solano, both at yeah. Carlton yeah. Hayes, they came and played. Yeah, shit. but yeah. they came and played right yeah. away. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Even if you try to use the old oh, New York native stuff, no, they still was New Yorkers. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? They came and played right away. So me, I had to sit out until I want to say mid late December. At that point, they was already double digit games. In. Yeah, junior this year. Junior, yeah. This is this this a big year. Yeah. What? This is a life defining. <laughs> yeah. No, man, this is when kids really start picking mm -hmm. up recruitment and stuff like that. And I just remember like having to go through all the different paperwork and stuff like that. And before I looked, I'm like, yo, the season is almost over, son. I almost transferred, dudes, I know I almost transferred the watch. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, yo, dude, Crump was over there, Crump and my pops was like, right. Shout out to Crump, yeah. yeah. Crump, Crump saved a lot of kids' lives in Atwell, man. Yeah, so I was going to go over there because I want to say that's where Caffelli left and he went to. Yeah, Caffelli was there. Yeah. Caffelli, Kurt Levin. Yeah, so I was going to spin over there because I'm like, son, those is really the guys. Yeah. Like these other dudes I'm cool with through basketball, but these guys I don't have relationships with. Since Abyssinian. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like we done hung out besides basketball. Mm -hmm. like, Caffelli the one that took me to the key for my first time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but, so that was family. You get what I'm saying? Rice. We was co-workers, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know I mean, some of them dudes I look at as family, though. Don't don't get that twisted, like. But um, you sit there and you like, damn, son, paperwork, this, that, and the third, so the season almost over, and I'm like, so my pops like, yo, so we gonna get a lawyer, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean? So pops go get a lawyer, miraculously, I'm eligible. Now. You know what I'm saying? But then most of them, he let you know, like, yo, you know, we got things going right now. I think we was like number six or seven in the country at the mm -hmm. time. We got things going, it's the yeah, chemistry. Yeah. Play, play the patient role. Yeah, but he tells me this after the article come out, after my first game. He, he plays me literally like two minutes to get Severian at Gauchos. I'm dumb hyped though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I come in and get me a bucket and two free throws. And I read the article after the game, you know. They got the whole article, then it's a separate article. Remember how the Daily News used to do it? It'd be like the little, uh, little caption article mm -hmm. that'd be at the bottom. And it's like Pope waiting in the wings. Middle school king comes back to place, and then Moe's saying to the Drano, you know, we got things going right now. He got to wait till next year to be his team next year. I'm like, man, you had that discussion. You did still sell me a dream. Yeah. But as a coach, everybody sell dudes a dream. Yeah. No, man, I'm being political <laughs> right now, you know what I'm saying? Because being bold in this space right now. But it's like, I didn't have that understanding. Mm -hmm. Me and you didn't have that conversation prior to me coming to Rice. Because the real conversation was that I was coming in and I was going to be a point guard. That was the real conversation. Yeah, we don't hold no punches on this. Yeah. Don't get this. So, it's, 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 it's. now, something went left. Mm -hmm. No, man. Allegedly, because like I said, I wasn't there for the conversation. Something went left, and now all of a sudden, I gotta wait my turn. Like, if, if you tell me I go around the corner and it's a million dollars waiting for me around the corner, I don't expect to go around the corner and it's a hundred thousand. I don't even care if it's nine hundred and ninety nine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, it better be everything you told me it was. If not, I'm gonna look at you crazy. Yeah. So now the whole year I'm spending, I'm on a defense. I'm really not rocking with the dudes on the team like that because obviously I know the conversation that went and I'm gonna do the super emotional, like for forever. Like I lose a game, I'm not, I'm likely crying after the game. I mean, I win the game, I'm talking crazy to you. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But I was always super emotional, so I was never a person that could hide how I really felt yeah. about you. Weird on your sleeve. Yeah, so it was certain dudes like I would poly with every day at school. Like obviously the Darvells, the Momos, my son Zamian. Shout out to Zay, man. Yeah, that's, my, that's my dog. He, he was on that team with um that rocket team. He was on my mm -hmm. rocket team because he's like an age exception. So yeah, yeah, he's yeah, a great yeah, above yeah. me, but he got to play with us. Because of the age. He, man, this motherfucker played on the motherfucker name mm -hmm. because he had went away with unique all stars when we started right, um right. Rutgers. So that's Tobias Harris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He couldn't play he wasn't I guess eligible to play in Rutgers because he wasn't there for the first couple of games. So he played under somebody's name, but he won MVP. Right, right, but right. But he right. couldn't accept the trophy. He had to leave mm -hmm. because they were the new. Man, that's fucking Zay getting right, 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 the right. trophy. That's crazy. When they when they had announced the person name. That's but yeah, go ahead with you were saying. But yeah, so the certain dudes that I was still rocking with heavy. I mean my son Hustle Man was still there before he mm -hmm. did Donovan. Yeah, I mean it was Kirk Kelly, I heard it from uh Rory, Well Mills. 
They always say Edgar was like it, super work ethic. Yeah, they said super work. Ethic. They said he came when he came to Gaza. He was just a shooter. They said he just worked out so hard. His work ethic. You know yeah, what they say, man. Hard the work beats talent. When talent don't work, work hard. They said his work ethic was nah, crazy, and, and I him. seen it that day. Mm -hmm. I seen it that Tell day. Us about it. Uh, we. We took the train, you know, right there, took the train straight down Lennox, walked across the bridge to Gauchos. Now, man, you get in there, I don't know how to work out. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't do it. That wasn't my thing. So, we're doing a little stuff with, you know what I mean? Setting the dude up, coming off the pin down, catching a shoot, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm be on my smooth, cool shit. I mean, I'm seeing how hard this nigga run. I'm like, this nigga running just as hard like when we running sprints in practice. Now, man, he like, yo, nah, you got to pick it up. And I'm like, I'm not hearing it from Dwayne. I'm hearing it from him. Your teammate. And even though I wasn't on the same page with dudes, mm -hmm. at that point, I was like, okay, son, give a fuck about, one, how this workout looking, and two, he trying to bring the dudes around him together. Bring them up. Because yeah. at some point you gonna need You gonna need to step up at some point You understand what I'm saying? And like I said, so I'm just sitting there going through the drum Like, yo, this nigga goes dumb hard But from that day, it made me start Respecting him? I always respected him mm -hmm. Edgar was somebody, you know, you got the Eggers, the Malik Booths You know, the Malcolm Grants, dudes, the Eugene Harveys Those dudes was all, Corey Fisher, all those dudes was in my in my class, so to speak, even though we wasn't in the same grade, yeah. because I used to always play up mm -hmm. and things like that, so you still play against those dudes. So I always respected Edgar because I, I knew he was one of them ones. Yeah. You get know what I'm saying? From nine, ten years old, mm -hmm. I understood it. You know what I'm saying? But I always respected him. But now you see a dude work and you understand what made you respect him. Yeah. Oh, you like You understand it. how he became one of them dudes. Yeah, so I'm like, now, okay, with the talent that I got now, if I start working like this, Shit gonna work itself out the way it needs to. You know what I mean? So like I said, man, it was it, it was dope and it's crazy because we ended up playing all hollows in the playoffs at Mount St. Michael's that same year. I just was DC there? That was perfect? Yeah, yeah, he was. Right, that was my wow. first year at Hollows. He was, was wow. Shout out to DC, man. That was like my big brother. Him and Chris De La Rosa. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, shout out to Chris De La Rosa too, you know what I mean? But Edgar got in foul trouble. So it's the playoff game. You got a young Momo, you got a young Kimba. Mo got some decisions to make. You know what I mean? Ohio's just pressing the shit out of us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm sitting there like this. He keep look, walking down the pitch, looking to see who he gonna put at. And my man D. Haynes, he was the assistant coach, right? He like, yo. Yeah. And look away like that? Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm like, Motar, you started. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm in the game now. And I ain't coming to do nothing crazy. I probably had like three or four assists. Mm -hmm. But it was just the, the poise and the calm demeanor for those few minutes yeah. when they was pressing. Because you're not pressing me back then. That's mm -hmm. that's not happening. You know what I mean? I wasn't, nobody was taking the basketball from me. It's like one person that violated me, Ty Lawson, my whole high school career as far as I couldn't do nothing with him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the person who cut your ass. Oh my God, abused me, son. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> we go get into that. Yeah, story. but so it was just the poise and the demeanor, and I'm like, yo, all right. Did my little five or six minutes, and I went and sat down. But at that point, we got control of the game. Mm -hmm. But I don't think one, I'm prepared for that moment. If I didn't go through the experience, whatever, whatever you know what I'm saying? Because he's the one going out the game, and. It was almost like the same day that we worked out and he was pushing me that day. He it was almost that. like he was like passing the torch indirectly mm -hmm. for me for that next year. It felt like he knew like, yo, it's going to be a moment that it's yeah. going to be your turn, not Kimbo and Momo. It's yeah, because remember you. Momo, freshman, Kimbo, sophomore. Mm -hmm. Kimbo was relatively nobody at that yeah. point. Kimbo ain't even played his freshman year. Right. I think he fell off. So his sophomore year is just like, you know, he's just getting his buzz. And right. When he went out AAU, that's when he blew up. Yeah, so like I said, and it was actually the first time in my life. Rice was the first time in my life I was ever humble. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I was humble. I more so had a chip on my shoulder, but I carried myself every day like I was humble because I'm like, all right, I'm not playing like that. Like I went like six or seven games 
Well, I maybe play one you minute. You can't have that big head because you're not playing. Yeah, so like, you, that's the humbling Yo, experience. like one minute, if that. Some games it was D and D's. I'm sitting there, top dude in the country, because I still was in the top 100. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm sitting on the bench with a warm up on this shit. Like, and I sat all the way at the end of the bench. All the way at the end of the bench. Like, I remember being, I told you I was a freshman in Ohio, so I remember coming to them games like, damn, I ain't playing snoop. Like, yeah, me like, in my head, I'm like, yo, damn, you made the wrong decision. Yeah, no, I, I knew at that point, and the crazy part is my hood, if you, especially at that time, my hood, like, they treated me like, Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I was going to hood games with my cops playing unlimited at that point too, with 30, 40 dudes. I was walking in the park like Pac and goddamn above the rim. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what are them type of situations? So when I started realizing like, yo, damn dudes from my hood not even coming to the games. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm right down the street. At that point, I'm like, nah, they a life lesson. Yeah, like the same dudes I still deal with to this day, little four or five dudes from my hood, they were still coming. They like, yo, bro, we in this with you regardless of uh, how we know the world. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, I just uh, listened to a song then by Rollo. He said, um, when you miss that game winner, watch them bleachers get empty. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's the key to the game, man. That's like, yeah. like when everything going good, everybody with you. Mm -hmm. But when shit fall down, I, nobody with you. Shit, shit, like I said, it was a hump. Like I said, one dude though I know was at every game was my pops. You know I mean, and he was coming to games even when I wasn't eligible to sit there and make sure mentally I was in a good space because mm -hmm. he understood like, like I said, it's the competitiveness from home and shit like that. I'm like, yo, they're, just, they're trying to pull the wool over my, my face right now. You get what I'm saying? Like, they don't think I understand what's going on. Yeah. So, like I said, it. It was a humbling experience. Nobody knew it was humbling me. They wanted it to humble me. Like you, mm -hmm. you, you, you know how kids is, you know what I mean? Like, niggas was like, I remember the joke at Rice, it's like, yo, damn, Ash, got the book out called The Jump. Who got the book out? Sebastian. Oh, Sebastian, okay. It was like, yeah, Sebastian Telfair got the book called The Jump. This shit gonna be called The Fall. Wow. And I'm like, yo, damn, this is dudes that's on my team. Like, so now I'm really on some, all right, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all, son. Because life got a crazy way of working itself out. Right? That should come back full circle. Yeah, son. And like I said, I'm 16 at the time. Yeah, I'm 16 at the time. At right. So you sitting there, you're hearing that shit. You're like, like, son, you never was even no dude like that. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, but because of who you affiliated with, whether it's Gaucho or the real side, you get that extra love. Ask your questions. Yeah. You think it has something to do with, like you said, you said you wasn't humble as a kid, like mm -hmm. eighth grade. Yeah. You think it has something to do with you not being humble and you being that number one player and those dudes not being them highly ranked players and now they feeling like, all right, yeah, I'm yeah, catching yeah. up to them now. Yeah. It's my turn to talk my shit. Yeah, no, definitely. So you feel like that was your karma? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I ain't gonna say karma. I'm gonna say, you know, it's just a part of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody deal with it at some point or another, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, everybody gonna do it. Yeah, it is. and it, it was okay for me because I understood how I was built. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, don't worry, cause hey, you around the corner, and Mo, Dwayne, nobody on this staff, the Catholic school league, nobody is gonna be able to save y'all from this pain that I got built up for y'all niggas right now. Like we gonna laugh and joke at lunch on the school trip, I mean the team trips mm -hmm. and all that right now, but I'm sitting there like this. Oh, 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 that was funny, know. yeah, that was funny. No, I was literally writing this shit down. I was literally writing this shit down. Like klepto type shit, like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, don't worry, I got you, sir. And I'm, and I'm being low and behold, we in Basketball City after the season is over. You know what I mean? And yeah, I hold on. Before you go to basketball, City, you took, took the chip. I took yeah. the chip at Rice. They took it mm -hmm. that year. We lost in the state federation to Lincoln. To Lincoln. You know what I mean? But before we even go any further, I, I want to look at the camera. <laughs> I got state championships in two different states. You know what I mean? In case you know I mean? there was any confusion, you know what I mean? But um, you sit there and you like, um, okay, I was supposed to play Gauchos initially. First of all, I was supposed to play Metro Hawks. Cause Thurman was on the staff at Rice. So Thurman was actually dropping me off some days home and stuff like that. I mean, you know, making this bid for me to play the Metro. 
I started seeing teenagers putting together over there. I was like, I'm not going through that bullshit again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I knew how they felt about the kid, Mike Coburn. So I'm like, nah, I'm cool, so. You get what I'm saying? And then I was going to do Gauchos, but can't holler me about playing Gauchos. You know what I mean? You know, you have rights to see Metro Hall to Gauchos. Mm -hmm. But really, Riverside. You get what I'm saying? Metro Hall to yeah, Riverside. Metro Hall to Riverside. Fast. Yeah, so I'm like, all right. So when Book started to see like how the season was going, I know he kind of. Now man, push you away. not push me away. He was easing back a little bit. Mm -hmm. You gonna see the 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 the, the, the Simpsons meme with the nigga Homer oh, yeah, Simpson going back in the, going back in the, in the trees. The shit, and shit. Hell yeah. yeah, so I'm like, damn, like dudes left me for dead. So now man, I always tell dudes to this day, besides Harlem dudes, Brooklyn dudes treated me better than anybody. So. Even when I used to go play in the little hood tournaments out there, cause my pops had people was out there, that he was cool on a whole nother tip. You know what I'm saying? And they'd be like, yo, you need to come play in this game over here. We bet X, Y, and Z. We need your son here. You know what I mean? So I would go play in those games. So Juice, you know what I mean? See me, I was at the Spring Fling in Jersey. The For those who don't know who Juice is, Juice is an uh, AU program ran by um, Tiny Moore. Yep. Yeah, so. Tiny see me just sitting there watching, it's crazy. And Ken Caffelli is a major part of my story. I'm sitting there, we, we went to go watch Caffelli, bro. Mm -hmm. Who Caffelli was running with? I don't remember. I thought Caffelli had stopped playing ball around that time. Nah, but he still nah, was hooping? Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Caffelli made it all the way to senior year, I believe. Okay. Because yeah, he was at Port Chester. Yeah, he was with Mo. Yeah. I just seen Mo in Miami, too. That motherfucker looked like an action figure. Yeah, there. yeah, son put him in red. Wow. <laughs> but, but, um, we went to see. And Tiny, my son Sonny, they walking by. He said, yo, who you playing with? I was like, nobody. So they kind of seen it on my face. And it was like, okay, yo, here, take this jersey. We on court three. All right. Me, Malcolm Grant, Irv Walker, Zamal Nixon. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Land Stevenson. Everywhere you play, y'all had a clutter of gold. Yeah, it, but you knew, in New York, you can't really get away yeah, from it. You can't get away from it. No, man. But um, my son Wayne Turner, Wayne was nasty, son. Oh, from Grady. Grady. Yeah, Wayne was nasty. Mm -hmm. But um, my son Devon Peterson, we had a, a brick, no, man. So I'm like, my head, shit, I'm stuck. Could have went and played with somebody else. Mm -hmm. First up, Tiny, like, yo. He used to, he could, he couldn't remember my name as Snoop, so he's like, yo, smooth. <laughs> smooth is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, no problem. So the crazy part, I played for Tiny two times prior to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I played for Tiny in ISA when he had Sebastian and Romel Bradley. Me and Corey Fisher played on that team. We was the youngins. And then I played for him another time. It was like Juice versus the Ravens, which was really Lincoln versus St. Ray's. Okay. They had a middle school game, then a high school game after. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, um, Second game, we playing against DC Assault. Noah Smith, Ty Lawson. Ty Lawson. No, no, not Ty Lawson. It was oh, Noah Smith, Chris Wright, Mike Beasley. They had like four dudes that made it to the league. We beat them. Mm -hmm. We beat them. And I had like 12 off the bench. That's excellent. Yeah, but Malcolm Grant and um, Lance Stevenson was wow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, that's what I'm going to stick with. For the rest of the mm -hmm. year, he lost in the chip to the players. Obviously, it's their tournament. They had Scoop Jardine and Chris Smith and those dudes, so we lost to them in the chip. Now, man, I'm like, I was doing a stick with him. Something happened after like two or three more tournaments. I went to Texas. And, yeah, something happened. I didn't go to the Bob Gibbons. So after I go to the Bob Gibbons, Tiny, like, yo, we picked up. I forgot who they picked up. I was like, nah, it's it whatever. So I'm back. Nothing for me. He's like, yo, this is what I'm gonna do though. Cause we ain't even got nothing popping off in Harlem right now. Yeah. So he told my pops, I got these uniforms for you. You know what I'm saying? They Adidas uniforms. We were responsible by these. Like, yo, we'll figure it out. You help if I need to make a phone call or whatever to get you in the tournament, that's what we'll do. Cause you know, at that time, it's still like, yo, who you got on your roster? Yeah. Cause if not, we'll put you in the bronze division. And not the gold. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, like I said, they, he looked out on that. So, you know, he's trying to figure out what's going to be the name of the team. So, when I played play 55th as a young, you know what I mean? And shout out to Al Cash because. Shout out to Al Cash and Alpha. Yeah. So, Al Cash was on the mic. You know, this is 
way back when I was already still top of the top. Mm -hmm. So he like, he was, my nickname, he was calling me the Pride of Harlem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we just turned it around and called the name of the team, mm -hmm. Harlem's Pride. You get what I'm saying? So we ended up playing Gauchos, our first game. He's like, in Basketball City. This is my time. Mo was there. You know what I mean? It's a live period of time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you got Georgia Tech, a bunch of other dudes was there. And I knew I had to get my shit off that game because the next game was a war for me. You know what I mean? Malik Booth, you know what I'm saying? But we'll get into that. But we, they, Terrell McKenzie, we got um, Momo, Two Holloway. No, not Momo, you got Two Holloway, Terrell McKenzie, Kimber, Jordan Theodore, the Grand Scott. Truck. No, Truck wasn't even on that. They played him. They played them up for that one game because they were short on numbers. I don't know how they were short on numbers, but they played them. So trucking them still, they was playing. They was still playing. They was on literally on the next court. Okay. So Book and Chad Babel was coaching Gaucho. My pops is is just a hood dude. He our coach. You know what I'm saying? He ain't got no assistant, no nothing. <laughs> and we put the team together literally that day. Mm -hmm. Like me and my son Will Pratt from my hood. No man, my son Tyree, a few other dudes, Scott Machado. Okay. Because you know we got the relationship with Nate Blue, so Scott had just got cut from Gaucho. I don't know how they cut Scott. Him and Mike Poole. So Nate Mike Poole, Mike Poole always played up. <laughs> yeah. So Nate Blue like. Nate Blue love Mike Poole. Yeah, so Nate Blue, yeah, that's a fact. So Nate Blue like, yo, he came my pops like, yo, get Scott and um Mike play with y'all. My pops like, yeah, you ain't got to ask that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you done did right by my son. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, long story short, I get him 29 in the second half alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's documented. So, ain't nothing that I'm sitting there saying that I'm making it up. Yeah, yeah. They could Google it. You know what I'm saying? And we beat them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was like actually on the beginning of that team's run. Because if you remember that year with Kemba, they took, um, they took the pieces. They was wild. That's when, that's when Kimba, John Theodore, Chuck, all of them blew up. Yeah, they was wild. I mean, Chris Fouch, all of them, you know what I mean? But, so, I got lucky and caught them at the beginning of that, but I still had that, that pain built up yeah. from the little jokey jokes mm -hmm. when we was in school, <laughs> not bad. And every basket, I'm staring at Mo, he's, sitting, he's standing on the baseline. Because he was the college coach, you know, trying to politic for the players, whatever he's doing, politic for himself, I don't know what he's doing. You know what I mean? But I was like, like, yeah, so my pops going crazy on the sideline. Yo, this what you was shelving? This what you was shelving? Come on, man. Like, but he had mad love for Kimber and them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He but respected that day you were son. Yeah, but he like, man, like, so he's going crazy. I'm automatically wild. I'm wilding even more. Yeah, you got these bum ass niggas playing ahead of me. That's what you want? Mind you, I'm doing all this shit. I know we got to go to school the next day. <laughs> so. You know Darvell is the worst person in the world. He gonna gas everything. We in school the next day. We at the table. It's quiet. It's quiet. And Darvell was like, so we go pretend like, like yesterday ain't happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he the ultimate, he the ultimate gas. Nah, but Kimber was straight up. Kimber was like, nah, I ain't gonna lie. You, you got that one yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, I ain't even know it was like that. You know what I mean? I knew it was like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't say that to him, but in my head, I knew it was like that. This was also appreciated shit, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, you know, you, uh, you end up, what, you did a fifth year? Like yeah, prep, yeah. Prep year, right? Mm -hmm. where I you went to Mount Zion. And that's where you committed to Iona? No, so, it's crazy. So I went to Mount Zion, and I got there and I reclined. Like I said, I didn't know what reclassing was when I was younger, so I got there. And like, the principal, she like, um, are you coming here? To, cause she didn't know that if I wasn't on my basketball, why she like, are you coming here? Because you want to finish out this year or you want to reclass and see if you get your extra year? So like, hold on, I get the, I'll do an extra year? Yeah, let me uh, go ahead and add that to the tab. I got to make up for that right shit. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Whatever the case may be, I reclassed there. Originally, I committed to Southern Miss. Mm, I don't know, man. Yeah, Conference USA at the time. I committed to Southern Miss. They had Coach Stacy's there at the time. And I fucked the pack up. I'm 
grown now, I could say that I fucked it back up. Like literally was coming to take me to dinner because I was about to sign another couple of days, whatever the case may be. We in practice and my son Justin Lee Mound, that was South Florida, he tells his story way better. No way, because he got the theatrics and shit. Mm-hmm. So my coach had a agenda, he didn't want me to go to something else. He wanted me to go somewhere else. I forgot what else school he wanted me to go to. It was D1 where he was getting some out of the situation. You know? So he like, he tried to sabotage it. He had practice, all of a sudden you just like, dudes fouled me all crazy. You know, you look bad. Yeah, so it's a Philly dude named Zuba, he fouled a life out of me. So I was saying, like, yo, son, relax yourself, be Like, you doing a lot today, son. Mm-hmm. Just doing what I was told. Well, I'm telling you this now, son, listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he just kept going, me and him got into it. Coach jump in, start trying to get at me. Mind you, coach from New York. Yeah. That's the part that hurt me even more. Coach from New York, I grew up playing with your son and against your son. So now you acting crazy. Now, mind you, my pops just donated the uniforms mm-hmm. and the practice uniform. So now I do the stunt and shit. Matter of fact, yeah, everybody take my practice uniform. Bro. That's how we doing it. That, that, that's that's the type of time I'm on right now. The cock, the cock Yeah. Got, got Cause I want, cause now the, whoever you showing off, I want it to be known mm-hmm. that I got one up. You understand what I'm saying? So, he run down on me, what? Da, da, da. Yo, who you talking to? I'm not one of these other dudes you be dealing with. Me and him get to tussling. So I said, just get in the middle, like, nah, slip those stuff and chill out. Yo, he, he, he wild, you know what I'm saying? He wild, right? I see the coach walking out. Never heard from him, you know, texting him, like, yo, the paperwork didn't come through, this, that, third. Or the assistant ends up hitting me, like, yo, listen, we're we gonna go in a different direction. Then a few coaches that I have relationships relationships with already was like, yo, you know, coaches talk. You understand what I'm saying? So you did this. Now you never know who else he told besides us. But dudes ain't gonna really wanna mess with you like that. They know you can't control. Because if you act like that with your high school coach, as you get older, you become an adult, you become more more independent. So now you sit there and you wanna act like that. With another grown man who's taking care of his family, with how much money he's making, and risk him getting fired or something because he put his hands on you and you put your hand, some type of scandal, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, he was like, dudes ain't gonna really want mess with you, so I don't know how you wanna clean that situation up, whatever the case may be. But, like I said, it was nothing I was able to do at that point. I'm a kid, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. And my pops is one. You know, street shit. Yeah. Did what you were supposed to do. The more and more I think about it, I'm about to come up there, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, the grown man, but like I'm up there, so you know I me. Mean? He got good advising not to do it by somebody. Well, I could say that he on the coach more. You know, Tony Childs. Okay. Oh, Tony Childs. Um, he was a while. Yeah. So him, my, him and my pops grew up playing together. Mm-hmm. Whatever the case may be. So Tony Childs, you know, he he got enough of it. You know his story. You know what I mean? And then you know the type of lifestyle he grew up in. He able to approach my pops to have a certain type of conversation with mm-hmm. him. Like yo, son, relax. So you you wild right now. You bugging out about the fuck it all. Yeah. Up. Like it's already bad. You gonna make it worse. But you won't make it worse. So my pops, you know, because of the respect that he got for Tony, I am a full out. You know what I'm saying? But then that ultimately led you to Iona. No, so before that No, you went to Juke. No, but even before that, so I didn't do my last year at Mount Zion in my reclass. Mm-hmm. I didn't do my last year at Mount Zion. I went to Apex Academy, you know. Morris Twins. Morris Twins, yeah. Yeah, I ended up going there. Worst experience of my life. <laughs> we stayed in a different hotel or a different house, getting there every month. Mm-hmm. Like, they charged it was crazy to go there. And then they shut us down towards the end of the year because they realized it wasn't legit, it wasn't NCAA. Like I said, I can talk about now. Yeah, because school is nothing on you know what I'm yeah. saying? But it was a it was a bad situation. Now did I get something out of it? Absolutely. Not man, but it's nothing that I would I would do over at that particular mm-hmm. spot. But so that's I ended up I didn't go to JUCO because of that I ended up going to JUCO because I didn't pass the amateurism part of the NCAA clearance. Okay. Because, you know, first of all I never thought I was going to college. I'm getting all that hype at that time. Yeah, eighth grade. <laughs> yeah in my head. You looking yeah. too far. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going straight to the league. So, you know what I'm saying? But 
whatever the case may be. So I was taking like little sneakers, sweatsuits, mm -hmm. a couple of hours here and there to stand the third. And you know, a dude that was I was dealing with, he ended up getting caught up and you know, to get yourself out of the jam. What do people normally do? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They need no brown. I mean, this shit bigger than Nino Brown, you man. Like, and they got a name, everybody that they was associated with at that time. And so that was under question with me. So I got my joint back, I'm like, eligible. I'm like, oh shit. No, my grades, I was on the honor roll my whole life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I did my homework in the amateurism joint. And then by the time I ended up fighting the situation and getting cleared, I was already two days in the school. Mm -hmm. So me finding another school to go to was gonna be impossible at that time, I mean, because dudes like I don't know if you know what say obviously it's their job they got sign somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got stuck on a juke off in North Dakota. Bro. You know what I mean? So it was wild out there. So. And you played there and that ultimately leads you to how So I played there, I didn't have a good year there. You didn't play good. I didn't play good, but my name was still big enough. They had this Juco All American camp in Vegas. I ended up getting invited to that joint. How you do? Oh, I was wowing in that joint, son. Like, wow. OD wow. Like, after that camp, I had like South Florida, um, St. John's. I was starting to get back in the group with the bigger name schools. USC was on me. I believe Tim Floyd was there at the time. No, man. Um, no, excuse me. Utah, that's where Tim Floyd was at. So I started gaining back with but I still was like, damn, like, dudes is wanting me for the following year. Yeah. So I had to find another Juco. So a dude that coached me in the Juco care, he was like, yo, I ain't got no scholarships. I'm not about my man. That's not from Cali, Coach Cunningham. He got the spot on my college. His game is perfect. I mean, your game is perfect for how he gonna let you play. So that's the same conference that Skip went to in the Ventura. Okay. So I'm like, all right. So I get there. It's a black coach. He's from Compton. That's already a plus. I'm like, he sat me down. Y'all said, I'll let you do whatever you want to do. Just don't turn the ball over. He said, I'll give you three turnovers a game. You do whatever you want to do. All that between the leg passes, the wrap around, the neck, all of that joints you want to do, I'll let you rock. I was like, I said, same thing. He's like, I got one favor though. I got a kid that was here for three years. You know what I mean? I was like, yo, son, this is your team. However you want to do it, this is your team. I just know, I don't care if I play five minutes, you want the best five minutes of me that you got. Mm -hmm. So he was like, nah, you want to play more than five minutes. So he would always let dude play the first six or seven minutes and a half. Some yeah, I'm finishing up the half. You know what I'm saying? I was wild out there, all conference, all of that. So it still wasn't really picking up because some of my grades didn't transfer from my Juco over, so I'm still waiting in limbo with that. So Iona was like, yo, to come here with a red shirt. And then the following year with Scott gone, Scott Machado. You were Momo in the backcourt, it's almost like middle school and high school all over again for you. Mm -hmm. So at first I still wasn't sold on this shit. Momo hits me, it's like, yo, what we doing, son? Like, let's do it. Like, you know we're gonna have a whole hall of men there. We close the home. We just had a baby. Use your brain, son. So I'm like, I, and that's ultimately how I get the I on, I on, which is the second worst experience. <laughs> no, man. Yeah. I mean, that's up to you if you want to dive into No, that. 100%. I mean, I mean you, know, you told me it off camera. Yeah, yeah. No, it ain't no secret enough yeah. that I could talk about because everything is the truth. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's documented. Like, and this is medical papers that's documented. But, you know, I didn't know nothing. Like, okay, you get to school. So they got like a team physician. I don't know what they, they title is, yeah. but it's something like a team physician. And after the NCAA meeting we had the first week of school, we all go see him, and it's like, all right. The dude, we start testing my ligaments and stuff. He like, you know you got torn ACL, right? I'm like, yeah, I know. It was torn when they recruited me. <laughs> the game that they seen, it was already torn. Mm -hmm. So they tried to make it seem like you I was being dishonest, yeah. so I was hiding something from him. No, I honestly forgot because I was still wowing on dudes with a torn ACL, complete tear in my ACL for four years. You know what I'm saying? So 
hot enough and it was it left my memory bank, you, know, you get what I'm saying? So they hit me with the eye and they go get it taken care of. I went to the best knee doctor that you could possibly find, Dr. Norman Scott. He was the next knee doctor at the time of the school with his son that bled. So that's how I got lucky with that blood. And wake up, you know, something like, yo, um, you know, you had more than just the ACL team, you also had a micro fracture in the system back in there, so we had to correct all of that. I'm like, okay. So in my head, I'm right now, what would that mean? Like, your recovery gonna be a lot longer. You had to Amari Mario Stout, I'm like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> recovery gonna be a lot longer than it needs to be because we had MRIs in other knee as well. You got a micro fracture and a torn meniscus in that knee also from overcompensating with this knee for mm -hmm. so long. So, he was like, you can choose to get this one done after six weeks because you can't touch your foot on the floor like six to eight weeks with the micro fracture. Mm -hmm. Why well, it's recovery, you know, that's when they drill, the blood come up and it, it creates scar tissue mm -hmm. and it works as a cushion, so to speak, so you're not going on bone directly. But um, I'm like, now I'm gonna wait. So ultimately it took me, they said the recovery process was gonna be a little bit more than a year. So they went, I even went and recruited a kid, Deshaun Gomez, that was actually who they seen me play against. You know what I mean? But when they recruited me, they went to take that second option. Yo, and so was on campus the next day. So I'm, I ain't really thinking nothing of it. I get the call, I mean the text, like, yo, come to the office. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm in class right now. Come anyway. I go into the office, no crutches and all of that. Hop. They had no elevators I had nowhere, no buildings. So they had no elevators. So I was late to every class, but I hopped into the office. The coach that recruited me, I mean, I ain't gonna throw him under the bus because the head coach right now, I don't want him to look like he's moving crazy. But um, he the only coach not in the office. I said, like, yo, close the door behind him, close the door. Like, he was sitting down. I was like, nah, girl, you talking about sitting down. <laughs> you know what I mean? You embrace it. You want me to brace myself for something. Move. Yeah, yeah. Say like, yo, we're gonna go in another direction. Yeah, we don't know if you're gonna recover the same way. I mean, you're a 5'10 guard, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It ain't like you're 6'5 or something like oh, that. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, we, for you, we think it's best if we go in another direction. Yeah. If we can help you out any type of way we want to. Obviously, you know you're lying. That's the biggest gas any coaches. And I'm telling you this as a coach, right? <laughs> That's the biggest gas any coach is going to tell you is if I can help you in any way, that means you're on your own <laughs> and you better figure it out. But I'm letting you know that you that this shit sound good coming out of my mouth. And it is over. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> I just don't, I still got the, the politically incorrect shit in me to tell you that it's over. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But they tell me that my pops immediately like yo this is what it is he flipping what you flipping on me for nah, nah, nah I'm, I'm on my way up there right now security don't let him on the campus because they are they must have got the phone call let them <laughs> he go. always on his way yeah yeah on his way 15 minutes away <laughs> right there but so he get there he like yo um what they said so i explain the story he like, yo, i don't worry about that we he start calling some of the other schools we was dealing with before that or whatever i called my juco coach he always there for me to this day. It's like, yo, son, this is what happened. He was like, I'm on the phone right now, I'm burning dudes' lines up. You might have to go to D2, though. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it don't matter to me, son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, college is college. And I never, it would be, because forget the fact I thought I was going straight to the league. I was never, Kiki was the only person before me I seen go to college from my hood. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for me, that shit, this was a blessing, period. You know what I'm saying? But whatever the case may be, they wouldn't give me my transcript. It was like our old bread. So it was like, I want to say it was 11 bands or 10 bands, whatever it was, it was something of that nature. One band ain't gonna make my story no man mm -hmm. worse than what it is. So my pops, he was outside, you know what I'm saying? He come, no, that's it, don't worry about it. He come to the financial department. They like, excuse me, whoa, that's not how we do things here. Because we need a check for one and for two, we need proof of income. Proof of income would put my man in the slip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But so he like, what? So we don't know nothing about that. So 
what he had to end up doing, he had to get my mom's the bread, and she had to keep the shit in her account until she showed that she could make enough money to be able to live her life still, lifestyle, which was pay her bills and all of that stuff, and still be able to save that type of money based off of what her income was. Mm-hmm. So that shit was sitting there for like seven, eight months. So it took me 17 months to recover from the ACL that I never fully recovered from to this day. And an extra six or seven months, eight months, whatever it was, for that money to clear for me to be able to get my transcript. And at that point, I really didn't want to hoop no more. I'm sitting in there with my daughter every day. I'm just enjoying being a father at that point. But still, it's that next shit in my head, like, well, what's next, bitch? I don't got no degree. I ain't no drug dealer. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't robbing nobody. And I don't got enough connections with people in the corporate world enough to get me a real good job that I could be able to take care of my daughter, you know what I mean? Take care of myself. And I'm already looking crazy because the hood, like I said, was looking at me like, oh, Jesus Christ at the time. Mm-hmm. So dude was looking at me like, no more boy. And then I sit there, you know, you tell your parents when you come to Hawaii, mom will buy you yeah. this house and this, that, and third. And that's you looking you at you like, like you fell. Yeah, and I'm like, so I went, I was in a bad space. Like I said, my Druco coach, he was always there for me. He was calling me every day, yo, yo get out your feelings, bro. Mm-hmm. Get out your feelings, son. You want to take this, this D2, I'm not going D2 no more. But you said you was good with it before, I'm not going. Why about that? So then he was like, all right. It's this NAI school. What the fuck is that? That's like D1. Yeah, but he's like, this is NAI school about to call you. Son is from Compton. I have a conversation with him. So son, like, yo, he called me. I dug him at first. I'm like, yo, you know, no disrespect, son. But it's nothing that y'all gonna do to change my mind. I'm never yeah. picking up a basketball ever again, right? My daughter is sitting next to me, right? She old enough to talk and have a conversation. She know how they treat me mm-hmm. when I'm walking. Like, oh, your daddy used to be this, he used to be that. She straight up says to me, so what's next? I'm like, what's next? That's the light in your head. Yeah, I'm like, what's next? I call some back, I say, yo, it's the opportunity. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's still available. He's like, absolutely. Get there, it wasn't what it was. They redshirted me too, mm-hmm. because I'm still got the big brace. On my knee, I'm not Stone fully. Steve Austin shit. Oh my god! I mean, three sixteen. So I like, but I go there. They like, we gonna redshirt you again. You don't look good. So they like, NAI, it's extra rules. You can get an extra year. You know what I mean, and it don't be held against you because we govern ourselves in the NAI. So I'm like, okay, no problem. I get halfway through the year, my coach from JUCO called me. Yo, I'm like, what's good? He like, yo. Remember the DMX was like, your inmates taking over the building? I'm like, what happened? So he's like, yo, I'm D2 in Texas right now. I'm the associate head coach there. So what we talking about? He's like, son, everybody from the JUCO coming, son. You got to come. They all said they only coming if you come. I'm like, they say less. It's dumb cold out here in Montana right now, <laughs> son. Like, freezing. Like, I'm talking about the heat blowing out in the car. You understand what I'm saying? I'm out. Going to Texas. I know it's hot out there get on the phone with the head coach and he's a head coach at a D1 right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, normally I don't do this shit because I don't want to throw nobody under the bus, but he's a super sucker, you know what I mean? And it's nothing that he can help me with mm-hmm. or hurt me with because I'm popping already on the coaching tip right now. You know I mean, Coach Newman, super sucker. Yo, I need you to be my next Bobby Brown because he coached at Cal State Fullerton before. Mm-hmm. This would be my next Bobby Brown, average 20 points a game for me. I know what your ability, you got the ability to do that, and things like that. Once you bring you here, a full scholarship, right? The NAIA, I wasn't on a full scholarship. I had to pay like $600 for a year. Still not bad, yeah. but still not full. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no problem. But I get over there, it's 14000 a semester in Texas. You can pass the paperwork first day of school. Now, mind you, before we even get to that part, I get there, hit me with the bullshit, like, yeah, because you transfer midway of the year, we can't get you on scholarship, just take this loan out. Mm-hmm. I don't know no better about none of that shit, you know what I'm saying? I don't know the rules and the regulations of the NCAA. 
So I'm just believing whatever you tell me at that point because the conversation we had, you should have my best interest. And because my dog is the one that got me here, but he don't know the bullshit that's going on because I never questioned nothing because you hit. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like I never thought to ask you for you to put pressure on him about that situation before he knew it was too late. So now I took out a loan and then summer school popping off. I'm like, I'm not going back home because I want to stay. I want to get my shit right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I can graduate earlier if I do summer school. So I don't know they don't pay for summer school neither. So I got to take out another loan. And I'm like, yo, first day of school, get there. Some pass everybody a scholarship, paperwork to sign and all of that. I should say 3000 a semester, big. I'm like, yo, hold on, where the ever I left? So he was like, ah, you know, we, we kind of over recruited. Because I was looking, we had like 18 dudes on the team. We got a dude from Auburn, another dude from High Point. No, no, I mean, like a bunch of dudes that was bounced back the same way I was. Yeah. So I'm like, I know the nigga from Auburn getting the whole four teams. Huh? They probably get that nigga 16. You know what I mean? Have an extra few dollars for his pocket. And if I haven't taken another loan out. So then, I wasn't eligible until January because of the transfer shit. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, God damn, son. So when I get there, it's almost the same situation as Rice. Junior year shit, same thing. It's like Rice was junior year. That's why I tell you, I always have a bad junior year. Like, even in my coaching shit, this year was my junior year. That was <laughs> a bad junior year. You understand what I'm saying? But, the niggas playing, playing me like four or five minutes a game. Now give or take, it was justified though. Because yeah. they was cooking me in practice. Mm -hmm. Like I was cooking them too, but I couldn't guard a dead body, son. My, my knee wouldn't allow it. Got these little young they're like, pew, pew, pew. I'm like, oh shit. So I didn't fit the style of play, but I don't care because this is what you told me. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't expect it to be 999,000, you know what I mean? It's supposed to be a million around that corner. But son just didn't play. Like I said, I had an extra year. Pulled me in the office, you know, next year. It's going to be a year. Yo, uh, we ain't doing that. Go over, try my luck, trying out for one of these teams overseas or some shit like that. Because I can't fuck with you no more because you a liar. But I learned a lot from him because he taught me how to recruit. I used to be in the office with him, taught me how to recruit, taught me what you need to look for. I used to be in the office with him when they was breaking down the film and all of that. You understand what I'm saying? And then he used to show me different different adjustments with the plays and stuff that we was running and stuff like that's so all that stuff i still run some of that shit to this day you know what i'm saying so it wasn't a failed mission he just was a suck ass nigga you know what i'm saying like but i ended up going to mexico first i moved to houston me and my man my man was living in houston he had a training and shit out there so i moved out there with him i'm working at the same time but we going to the trainer trying to get right because it's just a trial in Mexico. Now all of this shit, now man, this is again, anybody that got to go to a trial for some overseas shit, you're getting scammed. 110%. <laughs> we go over to Chihuahua. Chihuahua, Mexico, shit sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. Right? Now man, see you that. We over there, they got a trial over there. I get there, there's some dudes that I was like, yo, like Ronaldo Balkman was over there. They had some dude that used to play with the Knicks. I'm like, talking about dread. Yeah, I'm like, okay, there's some dudes over here. You get what I'm saying? But I'm not knowing shit is part of the scam. They're already over there playing. Yeah. But they used them, probably give them an extra few dollars to be a part of the trial so that way it looked like this shit is legit. And you ain't gonna say no just to come run up down the court for a few minutes and yeah. take the stack or whatever the case may be. So whatever the case may be, I'm out there cooking at the trial. There was actually a dude that was on the Jazz Summer League team. I think his name was like Terrence Joyner. I say, man, I cooked that nigga. Cooked him. You know what I'm saying? And I like to point out, son, the draft coming, they about to pick me. My man got picked, I ain't get picked. But dude sit there and was like, yo, don't worry about it. We still want to give you the contract joint. Mm -hmm. Long story short, nobody got the contract. Even the niggas that got picked mm -hmm. in the draft show. So I'm sitting there thinking it's supposed to be eight grand a month. And I ain't getting that. I'm just sitting there waiting in limbo. I'm like, yo, for all this, I'm going back, son. I could be on a block. I'm thinking of dumb shit now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
trying to make a few dollars. Like, this basketball shit, I ain't got that much love for it then. You know what I mean? I'm going to sit there and put my life in limbo. I got a daughter at home. You know what I mean? I got to make sure her life was just as good, if not better, as mine was coming up. Like I told you, because I grew up in the hood, that don't mean I was broke. Mm -hmm. That's what my father said. I was giving whatever I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And even some of the niggas that was hanging with me was giving whatever they wanted because of yeah. their affiliation with me. You know what I'm saying? But I can't let my daughter get shortchanged because I'm sitting there chasing some dream that might not never materialized. You know what I'm saying? I've heard, it's crazy, that same day I'm thinking about the shit, I heard a Kobe interview, right? He like sometimes you can hold on to something so tight that the shit still starts to slip away. Yeah. So I'm like, at that point, that shit is a sign. So this, the basketball shit is over with. So. And that's when you came back and got into the coaching. I didn't even get into the coaching right away, though. I, mean, I was you know, I was home gambling or something. Like, <laughs> I was going, you know, barbershop, corner store, yo, listen, we get Alabama, Ohio State, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing my parlays and I was, I was doing I So that was, I don't need to get a regular job. My man from, calls me from, my Juco coach calls me like, yo, tell me how I you, I need a favor. It's gonna work out for you. Cause he was always telling me you wanted to be a coach one day. He was like, I just got a head coaching job at my son's high school out here in Vegas. I do not want to coach this one. Because you know it's a difference when he had to come out your mouth and sound like dad. Mm -hmm. Then when he had to come out to my house, you know what I'm saying? Sound like coach. He said, I'm still going to be there. But I want you to come take care of this situation. So he was like, I'm going to end up letting you take over this situation because you're um, your what you call it. Mm -hmm. Because my son won't listen to you. He was like, you come stay with me free of charge. I got a crib, three, four bedrooms. I was like, all right, but it's Vegas. I'm, I'm out there. So that's how I ended up starting the coaching shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, so now that we wrapping up the interview, because we already came for a circle, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, with your, with your story, your story's a unique one. Yeah, I want to know your key to the game. When I say key to the game, it's like with some advice or some some words of wisdom with all your knowledge that you got that you could give to younger kids or your younger self, seeing that you said that you felt that you was naive and, and, and big headed back in the day. Right. What, what, can, what, what advice would you give to your younger self that would have helped you as an adult? Like I said, my story played out the way it was God, supposed to yeah, play. You know what I'm God, saying? It was God's plan. But for somebody else that's younger, I tell kids this all the time, the biggest thing is first of all, trust yourself. A lot of these people that's around you don't really got your best interest. They trying to give you hear the word handler nowadays. I hate the word handler. A lot of these dudes just looking for what they can get out of it. They don't really care about what how that hurts you or helps you in the future. As long as they can get something out of it, that's what they care about. So don't trust man, trust yourself. Secondly, have fun with this shit. Because you only get to do it for so long. Like I tell dudes, you might play basketball 15, maybe 20 years if you're lucky. And that's all the way from the day you start to whenever you finish, not just saying 20 years in the league. Because most of y'all ain't going to the league. Not some of y'all, most of y'all ain't going to the league. 99%. You understand what I'm saying? And so you gotta have fun with this shit. And now that it's so, so much a business, slow down a little bit and learn the business. Because a lot of the shit that's going on, especially with the NILs and different ways to make money with this shit, a lot of these kids are getting jerked out of the dollar amount that's guaranteed to them, so to speak. So you gotta make sure you sit back and you learn the business and then prepare for life after basketball. I watched too many times where dudes are starting to lose themselves after basketball. Like I, I was just that's talking about that. Yeah, because that's their identity. Basketball is a lot of these people's identities. Like, you'll sit there and they wonder, like I said, I was in limbo, like what's, what's next? next you know what I'm saying? I was just blessed enough and fortunate enough that somebody was able to extend that out of to me, but a lot of people don't get that. That's why you see these dudes, and this is no shot at nobody, but they start turning into rappers or they drug, dealers. drug dealers, stuff that's your life not about. And then when you realize that shit not working out, it's almost like you lose yourself. 
you start to see shit like, oh, this dude committed suicide. I didn't see that coming on. Oh, this dude killed such a name in jail for the rest of his life. I didn't see that coming. No, because I actually, it's crazy. I just told somebody yesterday, they need to start providing counseling or like therapy for dudes, not just basketball players, but if you made it to at least the collegiate level as an athlete, period, they should provide some type of people that's able to talk to you, whether it's through your insurance or whatever the case may be, to help you figure out one what's next and to help you figure out how do I find myself. Because if not, the shit can go completely left. You get what I'm saying? So that that would be my advice. Games. Yeah, my key to the game, excuse me. And um we're gonna end this off with three questions. Mm -hmm. I wanna know who who cut your ass? Ty Lawson violated me to the max. <laughs> to the max. Like it wasn't even with my freshman year blood, we played he's going to Bishop McNamara. My man played it. My man I told he was number one mm -hmm. in the country. They played with DC Blue Devils together. So he was telling me, he was like, I'm gonna kill this little nigga. He gets in foul trouble, I gotta come in the game. At this point nobody's never taken the ball from me before. We run this little bullshit play <laughs> where you gotta like spin and the other, other person go back door. Son ripped me back to back plays on the dump and shit. So I tried to fight him in the um going in the halftime a little a little hallway shit, <laughs> but the way the, the the gym was, the people in the stands could see what's going on in the hallway. Yeah. So they was busting my ass up. I was trying to trying to get to the niggas, man. like, cause he said to my man, like, I thought he was nice. <laughs> like, what? You stop playing. Like, what, what up, son? Baji, he probably was gonna whoop my ass. This nigga was like two hundred pounds, dumb diesel. Yeah, I didn't know I was in the military. Yeah. yeah. And so, but I didn't care. My pops is yelling from the top. Nigga, you put your hands on that nigga, I'm gonna put my hands on you. That nigga busting your ass. Stop making excuses. You bitching right now, nigga. I'm like, damn, son. And then a nigga do the shit at the end of the game because he ended up getting MVP. It was a showcase game. Who who joined? And I got sportsmanship. Before a freshman though, me get sportsmanship. Yeah, I had eight and eight or some shit like that, mm -hmm. right? The nigga does this shit, put his hand around my neck in a picture. I'm like, damn, that's how I know the nigga really violated me, son, because he still violated me, and I can't do nothing about it, son. So, um, my second question, what's a big name that you killed? It's a lot. It's a lot. The biggest, though, got to be D-Rose. I got it on tape, too. You know what I mean? VHS joint. You know what I mean? It was in the Nationals. Like, and we beat them, too. They just kept talking about this dude from Chicago, this dude from Chicago. You know, we ain't had social media and nothing like that. So I'm like, what the fuck about none of that? You see this thing on layup line. Me and my son Darius is like, whoa. <laughs> Cause we used to do we used to defensive but mm -hmm. me, Darius, and my son Josh Spivey. I remember you know Josh. Man? Yeah. Team yeah. So Spivey wasn't playing that much at that time. And then me and Darius was take tell you, you gonna face him now, I got him now. So we was, we was trying not to let son get the ball. And on the other end, we was just working. My last question, who the best dude you ever seen? Good job. In my eyes. own eyes? It's not even a question I tell dudes to this day. DeJuan Wagner, not the junior. Yeah, not the, 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 it's crazy. Not the third, no, yeah. no, the, that's the junior. Matter of yeah. fact, the, pops, the grandpa's name is Miller. Yeah, Miller, yeah. So, DeJuan Wagner, I sat there and I I watched him play in Gauchos. It was Camden, I want to say it was Camden versus St. Ray's. And Julius Hodge was playing. Yo, somebody just told me, yo, you, you, you're not lying, because somebody yeah. just told me the same exact story. And Julius Hodge was playing, and I remember the nigga Wagner, yo, he taking one or two steps. And anybody know Gaucho Court? Gaucho Court is big. He's in big court. Yeah, he taking one or two steps across half court, maybe two, and he letting that shit go with a hand in his face. I'm like, yo, son. But he's making the shit. He finished like 44, same race, beat them. But he finished like 44. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, damn, son. And the crowd totally crazy to him. And he probably the first person in that era that I ever seen tell somebody to suck their dick. And it was no consequence that came. <laughs> I'm like, he like, he do this shit suck. I'm like, oh, shit, what's about to happen now? Because I know how we grew up. So nothing happened. I'm like, nah, he really that nigga, son. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I got a question for you. What's the game you was talking about? The what? You said you had a game you wanted to. I heard about a famous game you and Corey Fisher. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What was that? Middle school or high yeah, school? Yeah, middle school, middle school, my eighth grade. Yeah. 
It's great. We was playing together at AAU, and we ended up playing um, against each other. So real quick, he got at me in truck the week before. He was playing with another school, some illegal shit. Him and G Coles. That niggas didn't even go to the school. I don't know how them niggas. G Coles just saying him and, um, and, and C Fish played on the same team. Yeah, in the I don't know how they did that shit with some illegal shit. We played them niggas in the chip. Me and Truck both had 25 plus. Mm-hmm. Is that my call? We both had 25 plus. Then Corey probably had close to 50s. I tell you, no bullshit. But neither one of us was guarding. Him. Yeah. Once we started guarding, he still was cooking, but he wasn't cooking like he was before. Mm-hmm. I think he was like breaking the zone. But we just won't worry about G. Coles when he wasn't about Corey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, um, because G. Coles was able to play. Don't get that twisted at all. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Coles always been nice. But, um, that's my guy. So that's what he's more worried about. And then Corey just went, wow. Like, before I looked up, I said, look at this question. I thought they still in the game like this. <laughs> so then we played against him again. He was, his, his school was him, Kemba. You know what I mean? Ivy, Ivy, I think it was like IS-74 or something. Yeah, like that Terrell Marcus, I mean, my son T-Mark, they was all on that team. We in Kips Bay, this is Corey Hood. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so you could have back. You could imagine how it was in their hood. So some of the kids on our team were suspended that game. You know what I mean? Like, we had no Jiggy. We didn't have, it was a few people we didn't have, right? You know, Jiggy's a big loss for us not to have. But long story short, I want to say, because me and Mo talked about this recently, me, me and Kimber, I mean, me and uh, Corey probably went about six or seven plays back to back. We was exchanging threes. That man, I finished with 38, I want to say. It. It's somewhere he had in the school newspaper. I finished with 38, and he had 43. I got kicked out the end of the third quarter. They put a dude in the game. He wasn't even basketball playing, nigga. He just was some wild Spanish nigga. He got in the game, fouled me all crazy. I'm shooting free throws, he talking crazy. I'm like, yo, son, like, what, what, what you wanna do, son? Like, you bugging. Yeah, so me and him walked to see each other's face. I had a tech from earlier in the game. So they kicked me out the game. That was my second tech. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I had a game in you, you, um, Pro Style anyway. <laughs> now, baby, we had to go play the church in Pro Style. So I dipped and go play, have a Sunday in the church. But I think we still won the game, too, matter of fact. I don't know, I wasn't there for the rest of the I, I, I wasn't there about that, but. Yeah, that was the that, that was the game I was talking about. Yeah, but now he was cooking. So. But yeah, man. Um, appreciate you guys. Appreciate for, uh, you. Well, appreciate you for giving these people your story, man. I can't wait for them to hear it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's episode eight. It's a wrap, man. Keep it in the game. Thank you, Appreciate you.